All right, so I'm using this old photo, and I'm just gonna use a couple of photos I found online since we're stuck inside. But I just wanna start going over basic shape breakdown uh, in relation to people sketching. So I'm using that when I just saw, basically I'm just warming up here. And if you notice, I'm basically starting with a tilted square, and then I'm just dropping in the landmarks. And which will all be refined and changed as I'm going along. So when I'm doing these first just sort of warming up kind of things, I'm not really worried about getting a great drawing or anything. I'm just trying to get my brain and my hands warmed up. So you can see, uh, just kind of barely building into this, most of his landmarks are there now, except, uh, except maybe his hair. So when we're doing this um, on location, which hopefully we'll be back out on location again, um, you can see how quickly I can throw this down. And when we do the whole figure here in a minute, you'll see that we can do that pretty quickly too. Now in location, I'd be moving a lot quicker. I'd probably have his whole body blocked in. But again, I'm just sort of warming up. And just what I'm really trying to do is get my brain where I can focus on shapes in relation to other shapes where I can pop them in so they're um, uh, in proportion. When you knock in the shoulders, you usually want to just run it right through the face so it comes out on the other side as one stroke. I kind of did a little different here, but that's because I'm sort of overworking the face part before I get the rest of it done. Usually I've just sort of, everything is just ghosted in and then I just build into it the way I'm doing here. But you got to get those big basic shapes right, otherwise nothing works. I'm using a little bit of an inkier technique here. Um, with the pencil, a lot of times I'll just use the side of the pencil to block in all the values. But, you know, I'm switching it up a little bit now because this feels a little more pen-like. Make sure you're always turning your, um, whether it's digitally or your sketchbook, so you can get the best angle. Otherwise your lines, especially ellipses and things like that, will get really screwy if you don't do that. And I just erased a little bit. I don't normally do that. Um, digitally, it makes it obviously it's very easy, but it can really screw up your drawing because you'll just start getting too uptight. Um, just draw super light and loose when you're starting out. Then you're just gonna refine and you're gonna keep things you like or, and get rid of things you don't like because they'll sort of just disappear into the drawing as you build it up.
Okay, so that's just a loose block image. You can see what we started with here. There's basically a square. And then I'm just landmarking it. And as long as I have that set up, you're going to see that building the rest of it actually goes pretty smoothly. So I'm landmarking the eyes, basically the brow line, bottom of the nose. Does the nose tilt up? Does it dip down? Does it go straight forward? Those are all the things I'm looking for, and you'd be surprised how far those things can go to capturing a likeness. And at this point, I'm not really looking at my reference anymore. I kind of know what his shapes are, so now I kind of just want to play with them a little bit. So that would be our basic block in right there. And that's what I would start working into. I can already see it. I have to raise his chin up unless I want to stylize him. Make sure you get the center axis down the center of his head right there. That's going to help you with a lot of things because that'll give you the center point that'll go back along his neck. That tells you where his collar is. It tells you where his um, collarbone is, all that kind of stuff. So everything has to sort of hinge off of that axis. So once my hands get warmed up, then I can start to play around with stylization. Um, I think I'm going to make them a little thicker and age them up a little bit. I didn't like that mouth extending back so far because I'm going to make him a little jowly, so which kind of usually speaks to age a little bit. I'm going to throw some glasses on them. Also age them up a little bit.
So again, I'm just using kind of a hatchy thing. Um, I've been looking at a lot of Bernie Wrights and stuff lately, so I'm having fun hatching everything lately. Now, a lot of times, even if I'm doing this on paper, it doesn't matter. And I will do this say, uh, variation of this tutorial on paper later. I'm getting my studio reset up. Um, but I'm just kind of playing with what I think his eye should be doing or what shape I want to use for it. So that's just a little bit of just riffing off the guy. If you look at it, I really just made him a little thicker and just gave him a little more of a jowliness to age him up. So let's go a different direction and just go a little more cartoony. So I'm still using my same landmark, same thing, except I'm just obviously exaggerating a little bit. But it's the same shape language. Once you understand that shape language of whatever it is you're drawing, then you can start to play.
As these things go on, I tend to go back and forth and start playing around with the previous ones. That's why I like to have a lot of them up on a page. So let's knock out one more, uh, even more simplified version. And if you see right here, if I raise his eyebrows up, he's going to have a lot more smug look. Because I've decided he's smug. Okay, so let's switch gears here now to a full figure. Um, I pulled this image off the web, and I try and pull images that are that I feel like I could be looking at this person in a cafe or something like that. So I just try to get myself into that mindset. So I'm just gonna do the same trick here, where I'm just gonna sort of look at everything as sort of a geometric shape, and once I put like that head shape down then I can start noticing where his shoulder meets his ear and where things pass through and where the other one comes out in relation to his beard and so on and so forth. So it's the same thing we've been doing with buildings and things like that. Once I have one thing there, then I can measure off of that thing to find out where the next thing goes. And I'm not overthinking that. I'm not sitting there with a pencil and trying to get exactly perfect. I'm just sort of using that as my guide to see where things fall. Now I tilted his head back here a little more than it is, but it doesn't bother me, so I'm just leaving it like that. I do the same thing on location. If something's tilted a little this way or that way, but it still looks okay, I might leave it. If I feel like the pose is super important to the thing, then I'll change it. 
And for the sake of doing this, I want to keep moving forward as long as I'm not wildly off. He's got a little more uh, mass behind his um, sleeve that I just noticed. And I try not to jump too fast to things like folds and things like that in the pants or wherever, any kind of the clothing. I want to make sure that all my shapes are there first and then I can, that's sort of a secondary shape. So the big overall shape's your primary shape, which is what I'm breaking down right here. So the way I'm seeing it basically is like this. It, this is how I basically see the whole thing. And I never think of it being people or anything else. I basically just see shapes. So you, it, that abstracting it in your mind will help you a lot because that's why I don't look at anything like people do and go, oh, I'm terrible at drawing people or whatever because I just see shapes. And as long as my brain is thinking that way, I can draw pretty much anything. I put the table in there because I need to have context for where his hands are. But when I'm doing this on location, I might just put a real slight indication of that and maybe the chair or something because the chair and the table aren't going anywhere, but he might get up and move. But I need that kind of to start placing things because his hand, both his hands are on the table. And I've got him stylized a little bit. He's a little shorter and a little squattier. Once I'm warmed up, I tend to start playing with the shapes and squashing and pulling and just different things. And then sometimes I just stay really straight to what I'm seeing um, and just drawing really accurately. It really just depends on the mood. And also, don't be afraid to make bad pages in your sketchbook. It doesn't matter. If you make a bad drawing, turn the page, make more drawings. That's where you try things, that's where you just play and have, hopefully, have fun. Now, when somebody's holding a pencil like that or a pen, you don't, if you notice, you don't have to do a lot with the hand because the pen sort of explains everything. Like his knuckles need to be knocked uh, at a different, little different angle, but it still works.
And just going in and uh, refining out the face a little bit, just giving you enough so things are starting to separate, give you a little more indication of his type of hair he has. And, and, and in here, I'm going to start going and hitting lines and things like that to start to make things read. And I'm also not going too much about what's actually on the table, but I like to give them something like coffee, um, plates, whatever. It breaks up the silhouette of the table also and just makes it look a little more interesting. So I'm going to give them coffee and a glass of wine. So his foot should be a little lower and his knee could be out a little, but I think it still works okay. I'm just gonna knock in a little reflection on the edge of the table or a little highlight. Okay, so just one more little simple breakdown how we're seeing this. When you're lucky, when, they're, when people are wearing clothes, they, like you could block out and cube out his legs together if you can, you know, just to make sure they work in relationship to each other. Um, and it'll help you line up the knees and things like that. So I would just keep building into these basic shapes just like we just did, but try and break it down into these simple shapes and try, especially with clothing, it's basically a bunch of graphic shapes. So I know right now everybody's kind of stuck inside, so, but we usually have humans in our house or dogs or cats or whatever, anything with anatomy right now. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon.